Good evening, thank you for joining us. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Carol Sy, and I have uh, the privilege to serve as the Associate Superintendent of Human Resources for the West Point Community School District. Um, I appreciate you joining us for our WDMCS Community Connections this evening. On behalf of West Des Moines Community Schools, welcome. We are grateful for the community leaders who have offered their time and expertise to serve on our panel this evening. I'd now like to introduce you to our panel moderator, who will in turn introduce our panelists. The Reverend Sarah Trone Harriet is the coordinator of interfaith engagement at the Des Moines Area Religious Council. Her role is to build relationships and understanding across religious diversity so that neighbors can work together on the big problems facing our community. Ordained in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, Reverend Trone Garia previously served congregations in Clive and in rural Virginia and worked as a hospital chaplain in Chicago and in Philadelphia. Please join me in welcoming the Reverend Sarah Trone Garia. Inclusion is a big part of it. Uh, so we can hire them, but if they don't feel included, 
um, they're not going to stay. And that goes for community, that goes for companies. Um, we always say that people choose community first and they choose jobs second. So we know that a lot of people from all over the country come here to interview for jobs. And they're looking at what does Des Moines have to offer? What does West Des Moines has, have to offer? Are there people like me here? Can I buy my grocery? Do I have a community? Can I have access to my worship, to whatever religion that I um, practice? So these are things people actually look at first. If I'm African American, can I have access to my hair braiding? It's small things like that people actually look into the community first. Um, and then they choose whether I want to work at Principal or Wells Fargo or whatever that company they're interviewing for, right? Um, so that's part of my job uh, at the partnership. So I lead our um, diversity and inclusion um, uh, work as a partnership, working with a large number of corporations. Um, uh, but also, uh, I live here in West Des Moines. Uh, my, my kids go to school here in West Des Moines. Uh, and I am the chair of West Des Moines Human Rights Commission. I took this role. Um, Gee, I can't even remember a couple of years ago, um, but um, uh, the, the commission was kind of dormant. Uh, a lot of people, I don't even know if you all of you know that we have a human rights commission in West Des Moines, and um, I was very, it's, I've done a lot of work in that area for the last 10, 15 years, and, and I was really interested. I always lived in West Des Moines and always worked in Des Moines, and always um, uh, wondered that I wanted to do something more in my own community that I live in, where my kids are going to school, um, West Des Human Rights Commission was a great fit for me, um, but I realized and found that it wasn't really active and it wasn't really doing much. Um, so I took it up on me and my own self to, um, you know, to be a part of it. Um, I took the chair, uh, position of the chair role um, a, a, about a year ago um, and done, doing a lot of revamping. We brought in a lot of amazing other individuals to join the commission. Um, and we've been in this journey of uh, finding what, what is our role in the com community, what should we be doing, what can we do. We have amazing individuals in the Human Rights Commission today, um, and we've just get up, scratched the surface of um, uh, what are we, we going to do, done a lot of strategic planning. Um, I'm so sorry about my phone. <laughs> I thought I silenced it. Um, so anyhow, I don't know, I'm going too long, but I'll stop there um, and looking forward to all right, welcome, and I want to say thank you all for being here tonight and um, having these conversations with us, and to all of the panelists for being here tonight and being willing to support this work. So I'm Lisa Rainey, and I have the pleasure of serving as superintendent for the West Moines Community School District. Um, we have been, as a district, on a learning journey around equity uh, that started approximately five years ago, and when that um, journey started, we had a large stakeholder group that uh, reviewed lots of different frameworks and we landed on Gary Howard's Deep Equity Framework. And I will tell you um, that we haven't arrived. Uh, we've spent lots of, in the last three years, really um, our adults and a subset of our students uh, learning around equity and um, talking about barriers that we have in our system that we that keep kids from feeling like they have access to the different opportunities that we provide. We're talking about um, culturally responsive classrooms. What does that look like? How do all students feel like they have voice and choice within our system? And so we continue with the support of our Board of Education, uh, working around and learning around that uh, equity piece and how can we look at policy and different, um, different steps that we can take to make our system a more supportive, welcoming, and safe environment for all students and families who um, want to attend West Des Moines Community Schools. So that's one of the pieces um, that we are currently doing in our organization to support our students and families. I would say another big piece in our community education department, um, led by Director Shauna Jansen, um, and with our um, uh, intercultural outreach coordinator, uh, we provide various classes and supports for our families. So we've had a mentoring program that they've provided. Um, we've had um, in our parent quest programs, how to raise culturally competent kids. So just those are just some examples. But through that, our community education department, we're really trying to reach beyond our school walls and how can we take this um, beyond West Des Moines Community Schools and within our community. Um, also, 
Director Jansen and Mr. Maxwell, our high school principal, lead a community conversation um, with our community equity work as well. And so that's another outlet to bring voices from our community into that learning. And we use some, they use some of our equity framework as well in that work. I would also say other resources that we have. So in our district, we um, partner with employee and family resources. We also partner with a couple different um, uh, integrative counseling, so different counseling um, agencies within the within the community so that if our students or families need support around that mental health piece, uh, we um, provide those services as well. And then in the last couple years, we have added behavior interventionists and we follow the positive behavior intervention support. So as we think about how can we teach those skills to our students so that they have the skills to really focus on our similarities versus the differences that we see within our within our student body. So those again are just a couple of the different things that we are doing, um, but I would say um, mostly that we're really focusing on that equity work and how can we make sure that we have a system that is supportive, safe, and welcoming for all who come to our schools. Buenas noches. Uh, first I'm going to um, interpret the question because if this is going to be streamlined um, I would really like our Spanish speaker to, to know at least what I'm saying. Um, una de mi nombre es Sonia Reyes y este, yo soy la directora de la, de la Oficina de Asuntos Latinos del Estado de Iowa. Y una de las cosas que yo hago es, um, porque la pregunta fue, ¿cómo mi organización o yo ayuda uh, para que las personas se sientan um, bien y apoyadas en la comunidad? Entonces lo que yo hago es conectar a las personas, proveer recursos, este, mantener a las organizaciones um, en, a, haciendo lo que te, deben de hacer y proveyendo educación. Este, so to answer the question, uh, my name is Sonia Reyes and I'm with the Office of Latin Affairs and uh, my main job under Iowa Code is to provide um, systemic change. We know that this is a systemic issue we know that the way that things are set up right now are for um, students of color or who are um, lgbtq to not thrive so my office is in charge of uh, causing the system change by connecting people to resources by providing um, education um, in creating initiatives and supporting the different organizations locally and statewide and government and one of the main things that I do is keep organizations accountable because we can provide all the education we want, all the tax we want, but if there's no accountability, nothing is going to change. My name is Chris Scott. I'm the honor to uh, serve as Chief of Police here in West Moines. Just completed my second year. Uh, within our organization, I think it's consistent with the, the the board up here, the panel up here, uh, number one thing that we try to do is educate, and, and there's a two pieces to that. One is internal education of our officers, diversity, implicit bias, what's the makeup of our community, uh, where our community members at within the city uh, that may come from different cultures. Uh, understanding what those cultures are like. Some people come from cultures where the police and uh, the community have a bad relationship. Um, some of those cultures don't allow women to uh, talk to another male. So we have to understand the people that we're, we're working with within our community. Uh, the second piece of that is doing our best to educate our community. Uh, we have uh, SROs in our schools. We have uh, community or Citizens Academy classes that we put on. And if you'd like to sign up for that, we're currently taking an enrollment. We'd love to have you. Uh, but anything we can do to help educate people out in the community as to what we do and why we do it. When, when we have people from other cultures come to our community, sometimes they bring their understanding of what their laws are and the cultures they come from. Well, they bring their, while they bring their culture here, they, they fall within our laws. And so there's that education piece that we have to get through. Uh, so uh, I would say that's probably the most important thing we do is educate both internally and within our community. Thank 
you so much. My name is Alex Hong, and I am the president of I Watching Community. And I believe the Chin people are the newest immigrant uh, immigrant here in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, we have been uh, living here since the last six to eight years, and we are uh, the first generation. And since we here, we have a lot of uh, things to do, things to learn and know. We struggle uh, a lot of things. And the last five years, we became uh, growing very fast. And in, uh, in Port County, we have uh, about uh, estimating more than at least 2,000 people uh, living right now in Port County. Um, so, uh, not only in the West Des Moines, Clyde, and it's in uh, Urbandale, uh, Johnston, and Mitchell Heights. Uh, we have, here the first problem we face is the language. So, 99% uh, from the Chin community doesn't speak English. So that is the main, uh, that my uh, organization we're trying to help and we have been help each other a lot and um, we the I watching community is uh, founded a couple of years ago but we were not uh, in actively uh, we recently have the opened the office and uh, volunteer run we open three days a week and we just started and we are still trying to uh, complete our mission. Our mission is to build a better community in many ways for the Chin. People live in the state of Iowa. So since we are very fresh and new to the community and the city, we, have, we could make a lot of trouble to the city. Things like uh, Chris mentioned about the laws that we know. Uh, we never practice the laws in our country. We have to uh, learn uh, from the beginning, from A. So uh, the second problem we face is the job. Uh, since most people doesn't speak English, uh, getting a job is a uh, little challenging. And in school, uh, since parents doesn't speak English, uh, the connection with the teachers and leaders from other communities is very difficult. So my community is trying to help those uh, who uh, really need interpreting, translating, and educating about the society, the communities here. And I personally believe that uh, helping my own community is the route to help the state that we live, the, the city that we live in, and the neighbor that we walk. Um, by helping and educating our community, we'll make a better society, a uh, better community, and better safe industry, and also in the school. So that is our main goal that we have uh, right now in our community. And we uh, uh, will have the, we have an, an annual celebration, cultural day, is we call the Chen National Day. It's not some kind of nationalism or something, but it is just the history day that we celebrate every year. Uh, it will be on the 22nd of February, and we will uh, heal on the uh, West Des Moines someplace. So um, I invite everybody here to attend our cultural thing. It will be very fun. And that is pretty much we are starting to help our community and the city that we live here. Good evening, my name is uh, Mike Bainema. I'm the Chief of Police in Clive. Uh, first of all, I wanna echo, as far as the missions and goals uh, for working toward a safer community, I'm gonna to echo a lot what uh, Chief Scott says. Things aren't different uh, across the border. We all have the, the same uh, goals and missions to make everyone feel safe. I can say in, in the, the this incident that has brought a lot of people together, the one thing that, that we can do is law, in law enforcement to make 
everyone feel uh, safe and welcome is when those bad incidents happen, how we, uh, how we react, how we handle those uh, events. I believe uh, in this recent event, we've, we've shown that uh, by uh, very quick action, thorough investigation, uh, we can bring uh, those to justice who, who would do anything to, to harm our community and by making a, a public statement that this sort of behavior is not acceptable in our community, in, in any community uh, in, in, in the Des Moines area. Um, but as, as far as working toward uh, those goals on a daily basis, it's, uh, it, it takes a continual effort. One of the things that, that we strive to do is make our workforce as a police organization reflective of our community. Uh, that's a, a difficult task and one we struggle with uh, uh, all the time. And uh, events like this help us to get the uh, message out. As Chief Scott says, they're having Citizens Academy. I also want people to know we're going to be hiring soon. And we want to, to have uh, people from all across our community be represented within our, our police organizations. And we need uh, cultural organizations like are represented here tonight to help us uh, bring uh, prospective employees to have uh, uh, to have someone from the, the Chin community uh, as a member of our police department would uh, would be very helpful for us to to reach out to that community. It is a it's a, a difficult uh, job traditionally. Uh, it's been easy for us to to hire people of the majority group. It's something that we continually have to work uh, for to, to make our organization uh, look like our community. Uh, we, we work to have those officers that we have hired be very sensitive to uh, issues of race and uh, multi, uh, uh, multicultural uh, community. Uh, for uh, new academy training for all new officers in the state of Iowa, requires multicultural training and uh, they also require on an ongoing basis uh, both uh, Clive and West Des Moines uh, have ongoing training for our officers to, to be sensitive to those issues. Those issues change as years go by and we try to, to uh, stay current with those. Okay. So we wanted to start with our strengths because we do have a lot of strengths in this community we have a, um, a lot of great resources, but sometimes the issue is we're not aware of what is happening in our community. And that's the great thing about events like this and panels, is we actually get to bring folks together so that the panelists can connect, but then you also are aware of those resources too. But given all of our strengths, there's still the reality that this community has a long way to go in being that community we hope for. So from your perspective, what does this community need to become that place where all are safe, supported, and welcome? Joe, would you like to uh, Thank you. I mean, clearly, um, we need more, more education. We need to discuss the history of diversity in this state, uh, providing textbooks in school that talk about the history of African Americans, of Latinos, uh, would be very important to the Asian community. Uh, over 20% of school-age kids in Iowa are from communities of color. That's over 100,000 of the 500,000 kids, K through 12. So we need to provide them with information. We need to make sure that our educators reflect their communities. I have a lot of law enforcement officials here who are striving to do that in law enforcement. They're really right on. I'm pretty impressed by that. But we, we need to have those discussions. We need to discuss what it is to be in Iowa and how we're different flavors, how immigration has always been part and partial of our state. There's things that have been forgotten. Uh, growing up in Iowa, um, I gotta tell you, I, I, I did not experience this type of people rhetoric and behavior back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. It wasn't until the twos that we started to hear these hateful things. There was a law that was passed early in the twos called English only, which began the hateful rhetoric in this state. 
The person who promoted that is now a member of Congress, and he continues to mouth those hateful things. We need to discuss that. We need to change the laws. Uh, we need to just have more coming together in just celebrating our diversity. We're a different state now, but we've always been kind of a different state because we've always relied on immigrants. Most everybody who came here can trace their history back to immigration, but that's not being discussed. So we really need to have those ongoing discussions because of the hateful rhetoric, the nativist type of rhetoric that's out there. We're not, we're forgetting who we are and we can't stop that. There was one presidential candidate who brought up to me about how his father uh, grew up in Germany and he remembered during the time that Hitler was rising how good Germans were not speaking about hate and that was the reason why it led to fascism. And here we're having the same thing as Good Iowans are not speaking up. They're not talking about the hateful things that are happening. We need to really take this on. We need to make sure that people within city government reflect the diversity of our communities. In Des Moines, we have a problem because 88% of the city employees in Des Moines are white, but 35% of the community are people of color. We've discussed that. This is a tough discussion but we need to make sure that city government reflects our people. It really seems like law enforcement here is doing a good job of that, but we're not having those same discussions in Des Moines. So we need to have a lot of discussions. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of, lot of loaded questions here today. Um, I was just gonna say, I think um, for me, the key word here is community. Um, and a lot of times we don't really stop to think, who is community, who is my community? Who are we? Like, what is my community made up of? Whether you're a school district, whether you're a city government, whether you're an employer, whether you're a neighbor, whoever you are. Um, I think the other thing that comes to my mind is changing demographics, right? Um, our elementary school today definitely probably does not look like the elementary school all of us went to, right? Um, high schools definitely doesn't look like um, what we you all went to. I didn't go to school here, so I should probably say you. Um, so it's this constant um, uh, changing of demographics. Um, there's lots and lots of new communities that are coming to our community. Uh, I, I am also a new uh, member of our community. I have been living in West Des for 13 years, and that's how long I have been in the U.S. Um, and so I have this different perspective that I bring to my journey and um, to, to this conversation. Um, but I think that's what I, I kind of, that's kind of what I encourage our uh, West Des Moines, City of West Des Moines to think about who, is, who are you serving, the City of West Des Moines, who are you serving? Uh, let's stop and think, do, we, do you know who these people are? Do you know what, what is the makeup of your community? And I'm sorry to say that a lot of city employees can't answer that question. Um, like who's in the community, and so um, that's that's why I think it's it's a two-way street, and that's why I'm there to say I know you know a lot of different communities. I know the Burmese community. I know the Indian community. I know a lot of immigrant communities. So I want to play a role to bridge that gap and facilitate this conversation and help you bring that perspective of who we are and what do we need and what can we contribute. Um, so it's a two-way street. I think that changing demographics is a huge uh, component, and I think a lot of us sometimes don't stop and think um, about who we are. Our textbooks and schools are certainly not teaching us a lot of these things on building empathy and, um, you know, I get surprised that uh, a lot of us don't know our, our own history. Um, I, like I said, I am a first generation immigrant and I'm learning every day and I feel, I'm sorry to say, but I, I really feel like there, I know so much about the history and culture of our organization, of our country, than a lot of other community members and it kind of like baffles me sometimes. Um, and so I think, um, I don't know, I think there's a lot of work to do, but um, can begin collaboration and each one of us have, have a role uh, to play and that's kind of what we're interested in doing. All right, well, I think you've heard a, a theme, but I would say um, an answer to this question is continued learning, continued education, and a mindset to be open to that. I do believe we have to be willing to have difficult conversations, and that's going to oftentimes make us uncomfortable, but when we get uncomfortable, that's when our learning continues to, to take place, and that's what's needed. Um, I think we also can't forget about our young people. You know, um, one of the, the 
The largest reasons that the stakeholder group selected the deep equity framework was because it had a component with students. So for the last two years, we've had students involved in our deep equity learning. And at the end of last school year, we brought our student group and our teacher group together and how powerful that was for our adults in our system, me included, to hear from our kids. And our kids were very open and honest with us about areas that we need to improve. And so we adults, I'll speak for West Des Moines Community Schools, um, need to be listening to our students and giving our students that voice. Um, but as a community, I think we need to listen to the young people because I believe they actually have some better answers to some of our concerns than we as adults. They've been more open. Um, they, they just blew us away last spring. So young people, we cannot forget. I, I would echo uh, what Joe said. As we continue, and we haven't had a lot of success here, but we continue through our Human Resources Department to think about how can our employees, whether that be our bus drivers, our nutrition workers, our administrators, or our teachers, how can they mirror our students in our classrooms? Um, we have had little success, but we don't have a lot of candidates there. So if there are candidates that would be willing to go into education, um, we'd love to have those employees as well in our system. And then I think, I speak for myself, but I think I speak for um, our Board of Education as well as most of our staff, I think we need to be listeners. So when we're having those difficult conversations, we need to be listeners and realize that we may have biases, biases and we and we may not even really understand that so but if we're open to listening and really learning um, I think we can be better than we were yesterday and our future can only be brighter the question that we asked was from our perspective is that the community is what we still need to change so that the people feel safe, supported and welcomed Um, tengo otra lista, una de ellas es consecuencias. Tienen que, que tenemos que mantener a toda la comunidad es, um, al día de lo que está pasando. Tienen que haber consecuencias cuando las escuelas y las organizaciones no protegen a las personas que están viviendo aquí, cuidar a los estudiantes especialmente. También tienen que darse cuenta a la gente blanca de que todo lo que, lo que pasó con Natalia no fue un incidente isolado, de que estas son cosas que están pasando todo el tiempo en los salones de clases, en la cafetería, en los restaurantes, en, las, en los supermercados, no es algo nuevo. Este, tienen que saber que esto nos pasa todo el tiempo a las personas de color. También tienen que a compensar a las personas que están trabajando, que son personas de color, este, tienen que compensar a pagarle más porque hacen mucho más. Y también tienen que saber cómo poder retener a esas personas. So to answer the question, um, the first thing that I that I have on my list of things that we need to change is we need to realize that what happened to Natalia is not an isolated incident. This happens to people of color all the time, every day, in the hallways, in the classrooms, in with counselors, with principals, with everywhere, in the grocery store. You've seen the videos that are going around of people being um, harassed by other people. It happens. Not, not all of those in incidents get recorded, but it does happen. And this is nothing new. We're talking about this right now because the person, the perpetrator, um, said that that's why she did it. But there's so many that don't say that. Um, so we need to realize, we need allies, all of you white people, we, you need to realize that this happens to us every single day. It happens to students. And we need to listen, like, like Dr. Remy said. We need to listen when people are saying they're not just saying it to um, for you to feel sorry for them or to give them a break. It's really happening. And when something happens to uh, to students specifically or to adults um, over and over and over, it becomes normal. And we don't want people to feel like this is normal behavior. Um, the other thing I have is accountability. We have to keep our schools businesses, stores, managers accountable for what they are not doing and for what they and also praise them for the good things that they are doing. But like I said before, if there's no accountability, nothing is going to change. Systems have to change for 
our environment to be welcoming. Right now it is not, because like I said before, it is not designed for people of color. It is designed for the white folks in, in the communities. And uh, so we need to be very conscious about that. We're trying to, um, to fit a, a triangle in a square or vice versa. And it just doesn't go because that is not what the, how the system is designed. And the other thing is we do have a few talking people of color that are working in, in the city, in the schools. These people need to be compensated because they are not just doing their job. They're doing all, multiple jobs and that is not fair. That's how we lose them. We need to stop hiring equity people that are white just because they went and lived overseas or somewhere else for six months. We need to hire people who are people of color who have grown up here, who know the community, who have lived, who, have, who are connected with the community, who will be able to answer questions that others don't, or they don't know how to because they haven't lived through that. I have a long list, but I'll stop there. <laughs> I'll start internally. One of the biggest challenges we have the police department, and it's already been discussed uh, to some level, is is our recruiting. We do not get minority recruiting as much as we go out and we try to solicit minority recruiting. Uh, this is a challenge, and we've seeked, uh, uh, I'm going to call it expert opinions, and we're listening and, and we're trying to do something different. When we have a, a strategy in place, and our measurement for that will be how many people apply. And if it doesn't work, then we're going to try to do something different. But it's real difficult, if you look at me, to go into a room full of you know, Latinos and say, hey, you should apply to the police department. I don't understand their world, and I need somebody who does to represent the police department to do that type of recruiting but until we get there i, I struggle uh, we have some phenomenal officers on our department minority officers on our department who do uh, wonderful work and to the point that was just made and they serve several hats not just that of being a police officer they go out and they and they they speak different languages so they serve as interpreters uh, they give guidance through uh, resources within city government maybe at, you know through you know how to get all the school district those types of resources so they, they do wear many many hats so i appreciate you saying that um from a recommendation uh for members of the community is engagement uh i think what some of the people on the, on the, the panel up here are engaged in their within their own communities and so I would encourage uh, more engagement within their, their communities, but at a broader scale. One of the uh, community mem uh, meetings that I've attended that's been hosted by uh, uh, the school district, uh, David Maxwell's here, who helps moderate some of those conversations. But they have a community equity conversation. And those that I've attended, I've always met somebody from a culture I'm not familiar with. I've always passed them my card and have offered them a cup of coffee because I do like coffee and pastries <laughs> and everybody has taken me up on the offer I have met with everybody I've given my card to you of another community to sit down and just simply understand their culture but that that engagement is critical for me as a leader within my department and but it's, it can't stop there right uh, we had a uh, a training, St. Gita was a part of the training uh, where we had members, uh, panel members of our community, all of different cultures come in and talk about their relationship with the police department, simply how they feel when they get stopped, what's going through their head, uh, in addition to um, uh, what it's like in their countries. And then we broke it down and we met with small groups um, just to understand them better. Because the reality is we are predominantly white, male and female, our department. Uh, but we're working on that. But I would ask from uh, those community members, please be engaged. I'll go back to our community uh, uh, academy, our citizens academy that's coming up. A great opportunity for engagement uh, to learn about what we do. My goal is, if we're successful within our minority groups of different cultures, 
is that we can have a, a systems academy or a community academy specific to that culture so that we can uh, get through those language barriers with interpreters. So that, that's another measure of success for how we're doing with our communities. And the last thing I would say, uh, report. Uh, the things that are happening in the school, the things that are happening in neighborhoods, things that happen in the mall, I don't care what it is. Safe people who, who feel safe in an environment with the police will report what's happening. People who don't feel safe, they believe that uh, if I call the police and put myself at risk, that's not a safe community. We are only as safe as the people in our community are willing to report. So um, we're working internally on our recruiting, be engaged in the community, and report crime. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Ken. Uh, I also think that we need uh, more connection with each other uh, more than before. Uh, what I mean is we need to work with um, all the law enforcement, uh, school teachers, and uh, parents in the community. If we connect each other uh, more than before, we will know uh, uh, more about us, just uh, like uh, Officer Chris uh, mentioned about. For example, if uh, from uh, especially for my chain community, if police officer stop a, a car and then ask him ask a question and then doesn't speak English and then don't know what to do, if it would be happen in a and it had been happen in Clive life, right? So. Uh, at that time come, uh, if we know each other, the police officer will know the correct number to reach us or reach anybody who can speak and interpret or on the phone. Uh, as well as in school, if anything happens in school, teachers will know the right number to communicate to the right language that they need. Uh, we have some interpreter everywhere, but uh, we feel that uh, in current situation that is not enough. Uh, we have struggled every day to make the medical appointment and going to school or um, uh, asking permission from the employer, uh, asking the doctors to change the appointment date. Something like that. Very, very small things can uh, block us to uh, uh, live the, our daily life uh, normal. So I also think uh, we did this kind of conversation is a great way to start and then we need more conversation, we need more discussion and we need uh, to know each other more than ever. I believe one thing that we can do is to publicly show that we are united in our intolerance of hatred and violence, uh, especially when it is because of, of bigotry. Uh, and coming together uh, like we're doing tonight, I believe is a great way to show that united front that we are, are not gonna tolerate this kind of behavior in our community. And I would encourage us to, to continue uh, with these kinds of communications. Thank you all so much for sharing about how you see the challenges and the opportunities in our community, how far we still have to go. An important part of our work together is acknowledging where we fall short and being honest about that, um, but that's the only way we can move forward in our work. And so I really appreciate you sharing that honestly with all of that are gathered here. I'm a parent in the West Point school system. My kids go to Clive Elementary. They're here because they can drive everywhere. And I know that there's a number of parents and community members here in the audience. And so I ask you, what can you offer them? Is there something, a take home, an opportunity coming up, something to point to, an action that they can take in the near future? And then also, what would you like to ask them to do? Or what would you like to ask from them? Or how could they be part of the work that you're doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. <clears throat> well, we in Lula, we feel that the school systems are the most important area to have discussions. And we in Lula have been working really hard to get into the schools to discuss voter uh, education and registration, to discuss the quality of affirmative action, to discuss opportunities in city government like police and firefighters. So we would urge you, um, on behalf of our organization, to please talk with your school district about inviting us in to meet with your students. Those students, your students, are there eight hours plus every day. There's a lot of things going on. But not all, there's never, there's usually not an opportunity to have a group such as ours in there, meeting with folks in the classroom to discuss who we are. I think that's very important. Uh, growing up in Des Moines, we used to have a lot of clubs uh, back in school. I remember in junior high, it's kind of called middle school. We had, we had, we had an explorers club that would uh, help on uh, recruiting young people into the Des Moines Police Department. But we don't have explorer clubs uh, much anymore. We don't have those type of things to help young people understand how they can become part of city government, how they can become police officers or firefighters. And I think that's, that's where we need to be. We need to be on the educational front to be discussing those things in the school system. But I gotta tell you, it has been somewhat difficult to get into the schools for our organization. Sometimes we're considered a little too progressive. Uh, we're a little too much discussing things like elections, voter registration, but we need to be there with you to talk with your kids about the changing uh, dynamics of Iowa, the changing dynamics of the country, the importance of engaging civically and what the history of our community is. But it's gonna take the parents to really urge the school systems to do more and to invite groups like ours and others up here to be part of the discussion. So we would hope that you would do that. Um, I might be a little bit repetitive maybe, um, but I think uh, opening your minds, I think you are already the most engaged group um, by coming here tonight and participating in this conversation, but we know there are a lot more parents and residents that are not engaged and um, we all have our own circle of influences that we can reach out to another you know, 5, 10, 15 group of individuals that we all know in our own networks to, to extend that invitation, to invite them uh, to be engaged. Um, there are plenty of opportunities in, in our community um, just to be a little bit open-minded um, to learn about others um, and it's okay to ask, you know, a lot of times people are afraid of asking questions, um, but it's okay to ask. I think, um, you know, it, it, I'd rather ask than, you know, not ask and not know and be afraid of it. So I think it's okay to ask. Um, our, uh, like Dr. Remy said, um, our uh, school district already has the equity conversations every month, um, and only a small group of people also attend those. And I've always wondered why we don't have more people attending these conversations. Um, so I think there's a, a Human Rights Commission this year we are planning to ramp up our engagement. Uh, we are uh, planning to host uh, more events so we can be more engaged with our community members. Uh, we do have uh, our first MLK Day event actually in the history uh, that we're hosting uh, on January 17th on Friday. 11:30 uh, to 1 o'clock at the West Human Human uh, Services campus. We are having a screening of a, uh, a film and followed by discussion. Um, a lot of us might not know the history of the holiday and why we're celebrating. Um, so each month there is something going on, right? We all have heard about Chinese New Year, but we don't really care to dig deeper and say, what is it? Like, who, who are, what are we celebrating? And maybe celebrate with them, right? Um, I think there's, um, we feel the pressure of celebrating the dominant culture holiday all the time, like holiday to time. We had just had a holiday. How many, who was not celebrating Christmas? There were so many people in the district, in our community, who was not celebrating Christmas. But they were also celebrating something else. Did we acknowledge that? I don't really know. There were tons of people celebrating Hanukkah. There were tons of people celebrating um, Kwanzaa, you know, just in the same month, did we acknowledge that? So I think we, we all can go a little bit beyond, um, you know, uh, the regular things we're doing and be responsive to, and that's, that was my comment around, just be responsive to who's around us, 
what do they celebrate, what, what do they, what, what's their culture like, and, and you'll be surprised to know that there are more similarities and differences, number one, and then there's so much learning that can happen um, just by uh, opening that conversation, that mind. Uh, there's so many neighbors that you might have, people that you work with, you know, kids you're, um, that your kids um, go to school with, and um, so I think um, those are some of the things that I would say. All right, um, as I stated earlier, we our community education department does a wonderful job, and so just a couple opportunities coming up. Uh, there's an event on Monday, February 7th, Raising Culturally Competent Kids. So I would encourage you if you want to learn around that. Uh, that's right here at the Learning Resource Center from 6.30 to 8. There's also um, on Thursday, March 5th, from 6.30 to 8.30, um, it's held at Valley High School, um, an event called Meet Your Neighbors. So that's a, another way to really get to know your neighbors and have conversations um, it, it helps us to understand why people from all around the world are making West Des Moines and surrounding communities their new home. So it's, it would be another great event. When I think uh, more specifically about our school buildings, I guess what I would ask is you need to report concerns to us. It's really difficult for us to make change when we don't know something's happened. And we want to make change. We want our students to, and families to feel supported. But if we don't know something's taking place, and I, I think Sonia said, you know, sometimes people get to point, well, that's just the way it is. It can't be that's just the way it is, because that's not what West Des Moines Community Schools is about. And so we need you to feel comfortable telling us what we may, you may think we don't want to hear. But that's how we will get better as a system. And sometimes, maybe that's a language barrier, so it's how, how do I report that? Who do I report that to? Teachers? building administrators, you can call me, I mean, really anyone in our system. But if the language is a problem, we do have interpreters. So you could call one of our interpreters and they could share that concern with the appropriate person within our system. We want to get better. The only way we can get better is to know where we're deficient. And sometimes that's hard for us to see within our system. So having those folks who can point out our mistakes to us so that we can get better is what we need from all of you. And I would just say, please participate in those community conversations that you've heard us talk about um, tonight. Again, the conversation, the dialogue, the exploring those um, difficult topics, that's how we're all going to get better. And we're going to get to know each other, and then we're going to have a better system and community. Uh, la pregunta fue, um, ¿qué es lo que podemos ofrecer a um, yo específicamente a miembros de la comunidad y cómo ellos pueden participar? Uh, una de las cosas que yo puedo decir a la comunidad latina es que tienen derechos, están en un país donde tienen derechos, donde la voz de ustedes cuenta. Es bien importante, la doctora Remy, que era superintendente del, del, um, del distrito, acaba de decir que reporten, que hagan reportes si algo pasa, pueden llamarle a ella, me pueden llamar a mí, pueden llamar a, a los intérpretes um, para que hagan reportes. Este, cuando algo pasa no es, um, no tenemos que acostumbrarnos a que así es como son las cosas, tenemos que reportarlas porque el distrito tiene, um, quiere cambiar las cosas, entonces eso es muy bien, muy importante. Tienen que saber que tienen una voz, tienen que... Um, eh, hacer que la gente los escuche ustedes tienen el derecho de ir a las escuelas de venir a las, a las reuniones de la mesa directiva que son las personas que hacen tomar las decisiones para todo el distrito usen esa voz, organícense si usted, algo que algún otro padre me viene a mi pedido es empezar un grupo de apoyo que solamente, solamente para padres latinos donde pueden llegar y compartir cuáles son sus preocupaciones y organizarse porque tenemos mucho poder cuando somos bastantes. Este, recuerden que no están solos, tienen apoyo, siempre me tienen amigas en, en, en el Estado, tienen a Joe Henry y a muchas otras um, organizaciones que están aquí para apoyarlos. Estamos a lo mejor. Ok. Um, so, to answer the question, um, I wanted to make sure that the Latino community or the Spanish speaking community um, heard what you said. Um, we that we do not that you need to report what um, what is happening. Um, so I just said that in Spanish. 
But one of the things that I said um, that I think that I can offer is provide resources, provide education, and help you organize. Um, a while back, some parents uh, contacted me because from um, from West Des Moines schools. Well, I get contacted from over the the state, but we're talking about West Des Moines right now. And they wanted to create kind of like a, a a Latino parent council because they felt like they were not being heard. But a lot of that is because they don't know that there are interpreters. They don't know who to call. Um, so that is a really good idea. I can help you get organized and form a group where um, where you can address concerns and support each other because we have to um, rely on each other. Um, I also said in Spanish that um, the Latino community has to remember, and people of color have to remember, you have a voice and you, ha you are allowed to go to the schools, to come to the school board meetings um, where the decisions get made. You have a voice and, um, and you have to use it. Remember that you're not alone. There's many organizations uh, the police departments are here, um, there, Joe Henry's here from the Latino community, and there's many, many organizations that are here to support you. So please do reach out. Our contact information are up there, I'm assuming, or somewhere. Um, so please reach out to us. Um, I don't mean to throw you under the bus there, but yeah, reach out to all of us. Um, because we are here to support you. We work in the community. We are community advocates, and um, we want to help. Uh, when I would ask the parents, I, I don't know if I've mentioned the Citizens Academy yet. Come on. <laughs> uh, that's always one, and I promise I won't. I won't say that again. Um, I would. I would ask parents or organizations to consider uh, whenever you're hosting something, if there's a some type of a group discussion, or if there's a, you know guest speakers where you just want to learn something different to consider an invite to the police department. We'd love to sit down and, and have be a part of the conversation. And it doesn't matter what the topic is. We really don't care. It's not about the topic. It's about being at the table and having a discussion and building a relationship. So uh, consider uh, an invite for us, if you would, please. For those in the West Des Moines School District, um, who have kids in the elementary schools, don't be surprised if your kids come home and say there are a bunch of cops at lunch today. <laughs> We've made our mission this year to be uh, to do a kind of a mob thing at, at lunchtime where we take a, a decent sized number of cops with us and we just go and we sit and we visit with the kids during lunchtime. And it's been amazing to, uh, to listen to why we're there. You know, it's, it's got to be bad, right? <laughs> but, when you tell kids, hey, you know, when was the last time we hung out? And they look at you like, never. And then I always say, then we're overdue. <laughs> so we just sit there and hang out. It's a great thing, and, and uh, we've, we've done some elementary, and we'll continue to do that here uh, as we approach spring. The other thing I would ask is to know your school resource officer. They're great ambassadors for the police department. They're there for a reason because they love kids and they love their job. Um, and they know the resources within the school district, within the city. So it's a great avenue to uh, get some of the resources. And we do, Joe talked about this, there's a former uh, program for youth known as the Explorer Program. Starting right now in our, in our high schools and our schools, we have opened up applications for a public safety cadet program, which is exactly what the old Explorer Program is, is like. So, that is uh, kicking off here in West Des Moines, and, and we're looking for a large turnout for that. So, those are uh, those are a few ideas, and hopefully, we get some return on. Thank you. Would it be okay if I interpret what he just said or summarize for for those Spanish speakers? Um, so, él acaba de decir de que para sus hijos que están en la en los grados de elementarios de que no se preocupen si a veces si llegan sus hijos y les dicen de que ellos que había un montón de policías en la cafetería ellos ahorita están lo que están haciendo es yendo a las cafeterías para conocer a los niños para para platicar con ellos para que no sientan ellos que los policías son personas de que tienen que tener miedo también dijo que hay un nuevo programa de cadetes para la, la para, para el público que va a más tarde en Valley High School el salto es eso yes. y también en la escuela del del grado medio 
Um, uh, I didn't want to answer the registry question, but uh, I wanted to say that uh, in our chain community, we will uh, support our community uh, in uh, interpreting, translating, and orientation, and counseling, referring services, and every uh, source that we got. And uh, we will try to uh, build our community better uh, every year. And uh, for the employers, uh, we uh, went to the employer if they need to interpret or translate your safety rules or the policies, the company policies, and everything so that uh, the non speaker, the non English speaker, will understand uh, the policies and uh, the rules. And even in the school, uh, we translated the, some uh, in Hakha Shen, but there are still who doesn't understand Hakha Shen as well among our Chin community. Uh, we may try to extend the, uh, the translating to our Chin community and support the communities uh, continuing until we uh, get uh, what we expected in our community. First, I want to make sure to point out that West Des Moines is going to be hosting a Citizens Academy on the this discussion, but I'm going to make sure I don't get lost. But, um, but it, it, as far as what the community can do to, to help us uh, see something, say something, uh, uh, law enforcement in a free society depends on cooperation from the community. We're only as strong as the community allows us to be. Uh, and we, we've, we've had the struggle for a, a long time when people uh, have information that will help to solve a crime, uh, to help a victim. We, we don't always hear people are afraid to come to us. And that is magnified in uh, immigrant communities. People who have language barriers are afraid to speak to us. And I, in the strongest possible terms, I wanted to, to for people to know that we are here to, to help, no matter if, if you speak our language or not, we will find the resources to, to communicate. I, I, I just know that there are uh, non-English speaking uh, uh, first generation immigrants who are victims of crimes, possibly by people in their own community who are afraid to come to the police. And it breaks my heart to know that someone is, is here, has come to a, a, a free country and cannot feel uh, free in their own small community. And uh, I, I want to encourage the leaders of different organizations to make contact with your local police departments. So uh, make contact with the police chief. Uh, open, open up uh, some dialogue. Uh, and we can really get a, uh, a long way. Um, we're soon going to be uh, neighbors to uh, the Chin Church in Clive. We're going to build the police station right next door. And I hope that helps us bridge, uh, uh, bridge gaps with, with that community and uh, help us to be more of a known quantity. because I've already learned a number of things that I didn't know were available um, to connect members of the community to, so thank you for that. I wanted to share about my own work. Um, a lot of people don't realize how religiously diverse the Des Moines metro area is. We have a long history of refugees and immigrants in this area bringing their religious communities, and so many people don't realize that we have about 10 mosques here in the metro, eight Buddhist temples, two Sikh temples, a Hindu temple outside of Madrid, but other Hindu communities in the area as well that worship in different ways. Um, and then we have um, at least three distinct worshiping Jewish communities and five Orthodox Christian communities who don't celebrate Christmas on the 25th, but it's a little bit later. And so some opportunities I want to offer you all. I have some handouts on the back table. We have a monthly meet your religious neighbor open house series where you can go and visit folks from other religious communities they know you're coming. Um, they're going to have food and a presentation. You can bring your friends. You'll know what to expect and how to prepare. And it's a great opportunity.
opportunity to meet your neighbors and get to know a little bit more about them. And then another project that's really close to my heart, um, I help to coordinate an interfaith youth leadership camp every summer with Drake University. And we have high school students come for five days to Drake's campus. We visit religious communities. And each student creates a digital storytelling project about their own faith to share. And those are all on the website. You can watch. And we're accepting applications for high school juniors and seniors. And for us, uh, you know, it's important to learn about our community, learn the history, learn about other cultures, but to really get to know people. I mean, that takes learning to a whole other level. And it, it makes it real life. Um, and you can apply it to your life and really engage in your life. And it changes you to have these relationships with folks who are different. And um, so that's what we seek to do in some of our work. And so that information is there. And Dr. Remy, on the back table, there is a flyer with all of our contact information. Yes, on the back table, there's a flyer with all of the panelists' contact information and then a couple of the events that I referenced and resources on the other side as well. So you have something to take home if you want to reach out to any of us, we welcome that. So we wanted to save time for questions at the end. So we're going to open it up now. We have mic. So would anyone like to ask a question of our panelists? Wow, we did a good job. Good. <laughs> okay. This isn't exactly a question. I um uh, I happen to have known Nicole Cole for since she was twelve years old. Uh babysat with her, been a very good friend with her at times. Uh and if somebody had told me that she would end up committing uh hate crime. I'd have told them they were crazy because she has uh, uh, associated with a diverse community for a long time. However, she has also been mentally ill for a very, very long time. Uh, <clears throat> I think some of the attitude, uh, the way the attitude has changed in the United States in the past 10, 12 years has got a great deal to do with what she said. Uh, and, and what she did. Uh, uh, be, but, uh, you know, she left the home uh, where she lived with people of color. And she went out and did this that day, not, <laughs> not five years ago. What do you need? And I, uh, the two books on the panel who agree with me on that, but we need a better way to address mental illness than we have. I have, I have a registered nurse, and I remember when they uh, cleared out all the mental health institutions and put all these people on the street, and people still don't have resources. When you know somebody is mentally ill, terribly mentally ill, somebody who is a to somebody's house a week before, saying that she was going to marry Kim Young Boon, is just to find him. He was coming to Des Moines to marry her. I mean, everybody knew that she was having mental problems, but they didn't know what to do about it. There was no place to go. So I, I just want to say, I don't know how this will come out, I, but I do know that this would have happened if the proper mental health treatment was always available and there were ways for people around somebody to get that mental health treatment. Before. Once they were adults, nobody has has a way to uh, uh, put them in a mental health institution uh, or anything like that. And, and it, it, it's going to lead to a lot more problems than you've seen on there. Thank you. Do any panelists want to respond? I do. Um, I, I agree with, um, with what you said that we, this state has a lack of resources for mental health. Um, and the only thing that I would say um, is that we have thousands of people who have mental health illnesses and they are not doing what she did. Just, uh, I agree uh, with everything you said. Uh, I think we're playing catch up from the taboo of mental illness. We're now, it's, we've accepted, maybe this is a reality in our world 
And so now we're saying, okay, now that we've acknowledged it or accepted it, we're starting to see a lot more people who uh, are being diagnosed with it. And so I think we're playing a little bit of catch up here. Uh, but I look at the, some of the initiatives that are going on in our jails, in our court system. Uh, there's some new initiatives going on uh, with uh, some youth responses in Boe County uh, for early diagnosis. And I'm, I, I'm optimistic that early diagnosis may help lead better to uh, quality of life issues that happen when they lose uh, school resources. I hate to say that, but uh, when they go out in the world on their own and they don't have that uh, institutional uh, guidance, um, sometimes people with uh, some mental health issues uh, get lost, and that's, that is truly the case. And so I'm, I mean, I'm glad to see a lot of the initiatives that are being done in a lot of different places. And uh, I, again, I just I think we're playing catch up, which is unfortunate. I would agree with what Chief Scott says. I mean, we, we have, we're doing a lot better in the Des Moines Metro. Uh, officers are assisted by a, a crisis intervention team, profession, uh, mental health professionals that we can call out to a scene when, uh, when, when someone is having having issues, uh, but yeah, there's a number of people out there who, who struggle with this every day. I'm, uh, especially uh, young people who, who aren't, aren't treated go for a long time, and uh, by the time they become an adult and to make their own decisions, it's too late sometimes to force that treatment. And I'm glad to see uh, that a, a mental health hospital is being built in probably a 100 bed facility and from what I understand at least half of those beds over half will be dedicated to to juveniles who have uh, mental health uh, or having a mental health crisis so again we are playing catch up but uh, hopefully we're going down the right path uh, just want to say you know heat heat shows itself and it permeates in the weakest elements of society so yes we have a mental health issue but with heat that is what's happening right now. And that's the thing that we have to resolve. We have to remove this hateful, hateful atmosphere. We have to do whatever we can. Mental health, yes, we need to tackle it. But it is the hate that is just permeating every element of society. Where our young Latinas and Latinos are being told in schools here in Iowa to go back to Mexico. They're being challenged on the basketball courts. They're, uh, Perry, Iowa, Mason City. This is not the Iowa that we knew decades ago, so we really do, as good citizens, need to be taking this on. And it goes back to the education system, uh, first and foremost, but I want to throw that out. Um, I am also a parent of two students who graduated from, from West Des Moines schools. And I can tell you that um, when uh, the my son was Told to go back to the, to Mexico and um, first of all I'm from El Salvador he was born here so um, but when this incident happened in school my son was the one who was sent home not the other kids so these things are happening in in our schools I know that these things happen to my son nothing happened to my daughter who was older but to him it did and um, you know, there's a lot of things. Oh, that's just how they are. It's, you know, mental health issues, but that is not okay. The, the hate's still there. And then from that point on, school was no longer a safe space for my child. And he had to spend a couple of years after that at Valley High School. So it, it happens. We know it happens in our, in our whole ways. And we have the issue of the impacts of incidents like we experienced in our community, the mental health impact to young people of color, to families of color in the community, experiencing that, but then also the daily mm -hmm. aggressions and smaller things that take a toll on mental health for students as well. Um, and so that's a piece of the mental health discussion. Are there others in the audience that would like to ask a question or make a comment? Um, it, it's just we keep talking about all these different things. I'm a school psychologist, so I, I'm always happy to talk about mental health, but um, we're also talking about race relations, um, faith, 
um, how do you see the intersection of all these different things? We've got, you know, race, poverty, um, mental health. How do we, sometimes it just feels like it's um, all bearing down upon us. Like, where do you start? Where, how do you, what's the one thing that we can do right now to get started and take action and, and do something to make our community better? You know, I'm going to jump in again. It, it is education, it's textbooks. I don't know if West Des Moines Schools has textbooks on black history. It, it used to be something that we had in Iowa schools, our Latino history. Really discussing uh, the history of our state, the history of different cultures is very important. We need to have many more discussions about that. But education is key. People need to know where they're coming from. I, I am really surprised how many is. And so Jesus said, is, there's a lot of Americans who don't know their history. We're, we're missing something. I don't, is history not mandatory anymore in elementary schools? What's going on? So we need to work on that. Yeah, I, I would echo the education piece and learning. Um, you know, I don't know that there's one thing um, that if we did X, everything's going to be okay. Um, but from what, from our perspective, um, our journey around learning through equity and really trying to examine ourselves and really start to um, understand the inequities that we have within our system and is something that we felt was really important to do. And through that, listening to our kids has helped us probably um, one of the most um, to really identify those barriers that they see for them so that we can look at policy or whatever that may be. But in the end, I think it's listening to each other, I think it's having conversations, and being willing to ask those really difficult questions that may make us may make you uncomfortable, but that's how we learn. Um, and for, for those who are in that conversation, not to take that as um, offensive, but to be just really genuine and honest that I want to learn about you and your culture and your background, because that forms relationships, and relationships, I believe, are what can help us move in the right direction. Also, if we, um, specifically for West Des Moines schools, if we remember the equity audit that was done a few years back, and the responses from teachers who were afraid to talk to kids of color or kids who look different than them just because um, they were afraid to offend them. We have to provide support for our teachers. We are asking them to do so much. Um, like you said, not just with uh, the cultural piece, but mental health and behavior issues. We have to provide support for, for our teachers. We have to also, I would say, that the one thing would be to have more support in the schools. Uh, more of the behavior interventions in the schools that look like the students, that. Um, are more people of color, so all white kids that you know, schools can also learn how to respect people of color that are in positions of leadership. Because if that doesn't happen, they're going to bring whatever they learn at home to the schools, and that is very, very important. And um, additionally, I would say we need to learn and we need to teach our children to. Um, look at somebody and not make assumptions because that's the, that's the worst enemy. We make assumptions as soon as we see somebody. I'm guilty of that too. Uh, I'm just going to like follow a theme here and I think it today sort of unfortunately it's not enough to um, just go to your job and it, it, our jobs are changing every single person. It's, today it's my teacher as teacher. Your job is not, it just not enough to just go in a classroom and just teach, right? It's just not enough as a police officer. We've had this conversation at the PD. It's just not enough to just go and wear a police hat. That's because they have to wear so many hats. They, they have to know who you're serving. They have to know. I would say you don't have to do a PhD in other culture. Just learn five things about a different culture, and you will see a difference in your attitude and approach and um, how you react to um, other uh, people. And so, unfortunately, I think it's it's just again keeping open mind. Um, continue to learn. Again, 20, 30 years ago, maybe being responsive to LGBTQ communities, we're not talking about that, right? Like, it's, it's coming up, it's coming up to, to us very fast. 
racial um, diversity, ethnic diversity, um, sexual identity diversity. And how many of us really talked about that that many years ago? And so I think it's just um, we have, unfortunately, we have to do that. Um, you know, I don't feel all of us don't feel happy about sitting here at eight o'clock and talking about this. But we are giving that extra time. We are going and volunteering to make sure we are being heard. We're sharing our stories. And we're doing all our part, and not enough of us are doing all of that. And so it takes all of us. It takes a village. I think my one recommendation, if there was one, would just be to be engaged. Um, change doesn't happen from a chair inside your house. Um, it happens when people get engaged in conversations, they get engaged in activities, they, they do things to make change happen. Um, that's different for everybody. One thing might fit better for this person and, and this might fit better for that, but I would say if there's one thing, it'd be to be engaged. Well, and for me, I'm seeing the schools trying to handle so many things, police officers trying to handle so many things. And you're not mental health experts, but you're often called to respond to those situations where it's just poverty. Um, and again, the schools as well. Um, and parents are struggling to make ends meet. We need to fund our public institutions so that they can adequately support our communities and make sure that that income inequality that we're seeing in our country turn around with good policy. I am a teacher in Adam West School District and um, I've been involved a little bit just from the beginning, not from the beginning, just, just this year, of sitting in the West Point um, School Board Equity Workshop that they did and they're doing some really great things trying to figure some things out. Um, I also have been going to um, the community conversations is this Thursday, 6 o'clock at 7, 7 o'clock, 7 9, Christy, at Christy Elementary. And I have to say that if you're looking for something to do right now, come to the meeting, because I have very limited experiences, and if everybody that shows up looks like me, I'm not getting much. So we have a really great group that shows up pretty consistently. And one of the really exciting things for me is that there are other teachers from other districts who have heard about the meeting and are there so that they can learn and be the change that they want to see in their community. And so then they go back to their schools and they tell people about it. They tell about the, what they learned and about um, what we did in the meeting. Um, and so if you're looking for something to actively do, there's Jason. <laughs> Are those meetings on that handout? Those meetings are not on that handout. Um, so this Thursday, 7 to 9 at Crestview. And then it is always the third Thursday of the month, typically from October through July. We take August and September off um, at 7 to 9 out. Um, we have moved the meetings to where they're happening at a different elementary school each month. So um, we could definitely uh, get that information out on our social media and website. Okay. So, right. It is, who would be the, if you want to get on a mailing list, who would be the contact person? Uh, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm Shawna Jansen. Actually, here, no, sorry. You can send it to wdmequity at gmail.com, and that will come to me, and I will get, be happy to put you on our mailing list. And we'll get, hopefully, not an annoying amount of emails, but enough to remind you that it's coming up. Talk to Sean if you want to learn more. All right, we have time for one last question. Um, well, my name is Lydia Kish, and I can see all around here I'm the only um, African here. And um, I want to thank the parents for inviting me because I've been in America for 15 years. And this is like my first time to attend this meeting to hear that. Like,
We don't know, like, you know, you have to learn the language, you have to learn the culture, you have to learn all those things. Like, um, I'm a person who, um, I like the spirit thing, I like to be in a different place, and I wanted to start my own business. So when I start my cleaning business, I feel like uh, I'm in a block, like I don't know where to go, I don't know who to talk to, and um, so for me to be here, knowing that I can reach out to somebody, like how can I better help my community, or how can I better bring the message that um, I've been in the community to my community, it will really help because um, even though I'm from, uh, from Uganda, like right now, um, Iowa is my home. I have to uh, find a way to build a future here to better help our, our community and to better help our kids and to help our people understand that um, even though you're from Africa, you belong here now and it's your job to make this, uh, uh, this um, neighborhood, you know, like a better place to be. So I really appreciate um, you guys, uh, you know, for doing this and I want to thank you for uh, caring for the Thank you. I can't think of better words to end. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we'd love to see you again and continue this conversation. So thank you for being here.